Hello, welcome back to another great Sunday school lesson. Uh, this time we're in the book of, well, 1st through 3rd John. And the uh, book of Take a Sad Son and Make a Better, or sorry, Book of Jude. And the lesson is titled God is Love. And really that's what this entire lesson is about. So, um, what my church, the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, believes, and many Christian faiths believe the same, is that there was an apostasy, a falling away of the church from uh, what Christ had originally taught uh, to, you know, becoming something very different than it was. Um, now, at this point, uh, when John was writing his uh, words, this we believe this apostasy was well underway, and there are many references uh, to it in, in the book of Acts, and at John himself refers to them in, in these uh, chapters, where uh, people had, had even stopped uh, preaching of Christ, that Christ uh, had appeared to people after he died. Um, and other such things that were just departing ever so slightly away from the initial truth. And it might seem like a small detail, but with when um, there's an old saying, the devil's in the details. And so when we start to depart on just small little things, then they slowly widen and get bigger and bigger and bigger until they become big, big problems. Or big, big changes, I should say, not problems. So, um... I'm, I'm actually, I want to read you this quote because it's, um, this is actually from John. This is, uh, let's see, let's see, 1 John 1.1 1, 1, actually, and I'm, what I'm going to read to you is the uh, Joseph Smith translation of it, and it, it goes like this. This is the testimony which we give of that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. So basically, yeah, it's his personal witness of the Savior. And kind of the biggest message that comes out uh, in the book of John is that it's just the love that Christ has for all of us, that God has for us, that Christ has for love, for us, and just this immense feeling of, of well-being and love, which is very, very different from the way uh, kind of the world views um god um it it's really very interesting i've very much like a lot of science fiction a lot of uh fantasy stories a lot of uh i dare i say it even horror stories and let me tell you the way that lovecraft uh created hp lovecraft the great horror writer created um gods were as completely alien and inimical to humans as could possibly be and it's it's great. It's John gives us this great reminder that it's very easy to forget that God isn't indifferent to us. He didn't, you know, create the earth and go away to play poker for while we just figured it all out for ourselves. He's there like a good parent. He's there. Not we don't necessarily see him, but it's there watching us, keeping us safe and just loving us and showing us this love and this just great affection. And it it, it is. It's mine. To me, it's mind numbing. It's it's my it just blows my mind like that little emoji. My mind is blown, and it's just it's just such an incredible thing that you know. Of you know, I'm I'm just one person on a very large, on a planet of quite a few people, and he has enough time to look at me and pay attention to me, and he does that for all of us, and that's just incredible. Not that he has the power to do that, but that he would care enough for each of us to do that. And it's just, it, it is, it's mind-numbing, it's its just incredible. Absolutely incredible, and just, it, it fills me with such, um, just love and joy to know that I, I am so loved. Um, yep, yeah. so, well, it's telling me the train safe is full, but that's okay. So, um, in, uh, let's see, where was it, John, First John 2... And in, into First John 3, it, it talks a little bit about uh, how we can become, that we can become like uh, Jesus Christ. And I kind of talked about this in, in my previous Sunday School videos, about the uh, skill trees and, you know, how, you know, we practice one aspect of Christ, 
uh, Christ-like attribute like uh, charity, and it every Christ-like attribute is increased, and we become more Christ-like in that way. Um, but you know, if if we take a step back, if we look at it as as a whole, as we can become like Christ, it, it's very easy to see the difference between us and Christ. You know, he was perfect, and we are pretty darn far from perfect, if I'm any judge. Which, you know, if I'm any judge of myself, we are pretty darn far from perfect, is what I meant there. <laughs> but yes, we, we aren't, none of us are perfect. None of us, you know, are always Christ-like. And so, when we do that, you know, when we hear that, it's very easy for us to do a direct comparison and say, yeah, there's no possible way, and just give up. And, you know, that's one of the loves and the hopefulness of it, is that we can become like Christ. Just, you know, step by step, precept by precept, we build upon ourselves, and we be can become like Christ. We can become perfect like Christ. And it's like uh, the aforementioned skills trees. We won't gain the hardest, the most powerful skills won't be attained right at the beginning of the game. We'll have to work for it, we'll have to build it, we'll have to spend time in the game building up our characters, building up the attributes we want before we actually get these uh, great attributes. And that's, you know, the same thing of Christ-like behaviors. We won't, you know, wake up tomorrow and be exactly like Christ in our actions. No, but what we can do is wake up tomorrow is start, you know, doing one thing that's Christ-like, then doing another and another and another until eventually, yeah, we can become exactly like Christ. And it's such an amazing, just principle, amazing, amazingly simplistic way of doing things, but it's so effective and so wonderful that it's, you know, that we can do that. It's... You know, we're not just born into one thing and have to stay that way. We can, you know, be born and have bad attributes and, you know, bad habits. We can learn them. We can be born with them, however you want to look at it. And yet we can still improve ourselves. We can become better than we are. We aren't stuck just being one thing. And, you know, that's... That's the great blessing of the of the gospel of what Christ teaches us is that the, that we can be bet, better than we are from even on a day to day basis moment to moment basis we can be by and far better than we are now and that that promise that idea is just so exceptional so wonderful that it, it just defies words it, it's such an amazing thing so. Now, one point I want to clarify, and this is down to, you know, our uh, beliefs, and it's in uh, 1 John 4.12. And it, uh, it says, in the original translation, it says, No man hath seen God at any time. Now, the Joseph Smith translation adds one line to that. It says, No man hath seen God at any, at any time, except them who believe. Um... So this this is one of those uh, points in the lesson where uh, what's said in the original translations is contradicted by what happens in in other places in the Bible. Moses uh, spoke to God face to face. It says um, in the Book of Revelations, specifically Revelations uh, four, uh, John in John's vision, he did speak and see God and spoke of people being on the right hand of God as. And it also noted is Acts 7, 55, and 56, which has a similar situation where people saw, you know, Christ standing on the right hand of God. And it was, you know, it's, that's the, that's the clarity of it. No man hath seen God at any time, except he hath faith. So it requires, um, so if a person doesn't believe in God, doesn't have faith in God, then they cannot see God. It, it, it's really that simple. But people who have been blessed to see God have had faith, have had the faith to see God. Now, if you have the faith to see God, does that mean you're going to see God? No. No, it doesn't. It's We are all given whatever blessings uh, God uh, deems most appropriate for us and for our growth. And, you know, ultimately to help others 
in our lives. And, you know, unless you're a prophet of God, odds are you will, you will not be able to see um, God in this life. Um, but if you are faithful, yes, you will definitely see him in the uh, next life. So it's something to look forward to in that regard. So um, the final point, well, there, there's a bunch of smaller things in this lesson, but the final big point of the lesson is, uh, and it states, it's from 1 John 5, and it states, as I exercise faith in Jesus Christ and am born again, I can overcome the world. So we're reaching a time, time in life where the world is has become very, very much against um, Christian beliefs, and it, it's showing, at least in you know Western culture, it is very much showing in how the culture moves and goes about. So a, a while back, um, I had someone rather um, <laughs> graphically uh, state, you know, start to discuss uh, Chick Fil A, the restaurant Chick Fil A. And how they are so happy that they won't be opening up in, uh, that the, uh, well, they tried to open up in London and uh, it got closed down. And, and how happy they were about that and, and so on and so forth. And it's um, to do with kind of the controversy about homosexuality with um, uh, Chick-fil-A. Uh, essentially, they had given money to a, a charity which had apparently uh, in somewhere in Africa done something that was considered to be anti-LGBT. Um, I'm not very clear on the details, as might be uh, divined from my tone of voice there. But, um, yeah, they, you know, they got a lot of backlash for donating to these charities, and a lot of people were, were you know, quite upset and vocal about it. And I have basically, basically came out and said, wait, I, I'm not sure if it justifies this level of reaction. And almost immediately in my discussions with a few people about this, it almost immediately turned from, you know, the validity of whether Chick the people who own Chick-fil-A um, had actually done something against LGBT people to, you know, the Christian um, belief that uh, homosexuality is a sin. And... You know, it's, uh, and one of the things that they said that was kind of my point of telling this long, meandering story was that, um, you know, that times have changed since uh, the church was organized. Any Christian church was organized. And um, the church really needs to move with the times. Now, this argument would work really, really well if the Church uh, of Jesus Christ were a man-made organization, but it's not. It comes from God. But, you know, now, just by dint of, of having the beliefs and following the law as given by God to his prophets, you know, we come under fire from the world. And oftentimes we will be faced with, you know, very tough questions because of this. But, you know, if, as it says, as we exercise faith in Jesus Christ and we are born again, you know, as, you know, I, I'll refer you back to Christ's uh, conversation with Nicodemus, which is in the book of John. I can't remember where offhand, <laughs> but, um, yeah, we, we are born again. We have, you know, we've come into this world. We are born into this world. But when we, through Christ, we are born spiritually reborn. And we become new people, essentially, as we repent, as we are born again. And once we do that, once we have the faith, and once we have the, once we have done that, then we can overcome the world. And no matter what the world throws at us, no matter what the world says to us about our beliefs, we can overcome it. We can be the best us we can possibly be. And... It won't be easy. There, there's a saying I remember in my uh, when I was a kid growing up in, in uh, the church. I'm not sure if this is every church who says this or just mine, but it was, um, you know, basically it just said, I never, I never said it would be easy. I only said it would be worth it. 
uh, as a statement from Christ to us about our religious, you know, about, you know, the gospel. And the truth of the matter is, it's never easy. Religion is never an easy thing. And if, you know, if we are truly converted, if we are truly born again, you know, and we have that faith, we can overcome the world no matter how hard it gets. Um, it, it, it has been said that God will never tempt us beyond our ability to resist, and God will never, you know, God will test us, but he will never test us past our breaking point. He will test us up to our breaking point, and it'll feel like we're about to shatter it, because we are, but he will never go beyond that. And if we have, if we have the faith, if we've been born again, and if we have the faith to persevere till the end, we will be by and far the better for it. And, yep, that's, that's the lesson. God truly loves us, and the reason he tests us is so that we can be the best us that we can possibly be. And we can overcome all things if we have faith in him, faith in Jesus Christ. And that is pretty much the lesson. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, like and subscribe if you like this. We have a lovely, you know, evening view of uh, Buckingham Palace there. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.